And joining me now is the former director of the FBI, James Comey. His new book is A Higher Loyalty, Truth, Lies, and Leadership. Director Comey, welcome to Meet the Press. Great to be with you. Let me start with some news over the last couple of days. The House Republicans put out the House Intelligence Committee report. I'm just curious if you believe it proves what the president says it proves. He claims that this report proves there's no evidence that the Trump campaign colluded, coordinated, or conspired with Russia, and that it was all a big hoax by the Democrats based on payments and lies. Is that your interpretation? That is not my understanding of what the facts were before I left the FBI, and I think the most important piece of work is the one the special counsel is doing now. This strikes me as a political document. And did the House Intelligence Committee at all serve a a um, good investigative purpose during all this in your observations? Not that I can see. Just totally got too politicized? Yeah, and it wrecked the committee and it damaged relationships with the FISA court, the intelligence communities. It was just a wreck. What's your opinion of Devin Nunes, the chairman of the House Intel Committee, and what was your relationship with him? The relationship was fine and professional. As the, one of the leaders of an intelligence community agency, I dealt with him and the committee, Mr. Schiff and Mr. Nunez, on a regular basis. Did, fine. They, did they deal with you fairly, or do you think they dealt with the FBI, treated the FBI fairly? I think they treated the FBI fairly. Has any member of Congress, in connection with the Russia, Russia probe at the, time of you, at the time that you left, has any, was any member of Congress under investigation in connection with this for either their actions involving the Russia probe or involving Russia? That's not something I can comment on. And that no comment, please don't read it uh, as anything other than a no comment. Fair enough. Um, when the president says, I have nothing to do with this Russia thing, I know it's something you've heard him say in private. What do you think he means when he says that? I do not know. I think it's an effort to try to, to undermine the credibility of the investigation that the special counsel is conducting. But beyond that, I don't know. Did you, when you first met with him that first time, in Trump Tower. Did your, did you, when did your antenna go up? Did you treat him suspiciously? Were you going into that meeting concerned based on other stuff you knew? Yeah, I was concerned about the nature of his commitment to truth-telling based on some of the things I'd seen during the campaign. But I went in trying to see what he was like as a leader and didn't see things that disturbed me until the lack of questions about what do we do next to protect the country. When you told him the contents of the Steele dossier, did you get the impression it was the first time he'd ever heard those allegations? Yes, and I didn't give him the briefing on the whole Steele dossier. Mm -hmm. My assignment was to brief him on a small part of it that was salacious and personal, and my sense was I didn't get a sense that he knew about those. When uh, I want to re-ask a question that Reince Priebus asked you, and you said in your memo, why include that salacious part? If it was something that you thought was, uh, you know, not that necessary to the investigation, or did you think it was important that he knew? We thought it was important that he knew, and I say we, meaning all the intelligence chiefs that put together the intelligence community assessment. We thought it was important that he know, because we knew, mm -hmm. and we don't want to be holding that back from the new president, and also the FBI's role is counterintelligence, and so we do a defensive briefing, whether or not something's true, just to let the person who might be the target of a leverage effort of an effort by an adversary to gain advantage over him, know that we have this information. You called him in the book unethical and untethered to the truth. Based on that, does that mean um, you think it would not be wise for him to sit down with Bob Mueller? That's a great question. That's one only he can answer and his lawyers can answer. Uh, it would be a important for a lawyer and client, especially this client, to have a real hard conversation about that. I hope that he will allow Director Mueller to complete his work. Whether that includes an interview or not is up to him. You've been a prosecutor um, well, most of your professional life. Is he a witness that you would find credible? I'd have serious doubts about his credibility. The President of the United States? Yes. Uh, whether he were under oath or not? Correct. And sometimes people who have serious credibility problems can tell the truth when they realize that the consequences of not telling the truth mm -hmm. in an interview or in the grand jury would be dire. But you'd have to go in with a healthy uh, sense that he might lie to you. Uh, if Mueller is following Justice Department guidelines, that sitting presidents cannot be criminally charged, then doesn't that mean that as so long as Mr. Trump is in the White House, he will never be considered a target of this investigation, only a subject? Yeah, there's logic to that. I don't know whether that's the logic of what I've read in the newspaper about him being told he's a subject, mm -hmm. but that would logically follow. If you can't be indicted, given that a target is someone on whom there's substantial evidence, enough evidence to charge, mm -hmm. then you could never be if a president can't be indicted. So in this case, 
and that is Justice Department guidelines. That a president, that right, the Justice Department operates under the guidelines that a president can, sitting president can never be indicted. My understanding is that's the current Office of Legal Counsel opinion in the department. Was Hillary Clinton never a target or a subject during the investigation? Sure, she was a subject of the investigation. But not a target. Correct. And why was that? Because we didn't develop substantial evidence to support a criminal prosecution against her. So at no time she was, an, uh, she was ever considered a target? Correct. Okay. Let me ask you, uh, since you left on May 9th, what percentage would you say of what you know about the Russia investigation, what you know about the facts, what you believe the facts are about Russian interference, what percentage of what you would say is in the public uh, domain right now? That's one I can't answer. I wouldn't answer anyway, but I don't, I don't have the math in my head, even if I were inclined to answer it. All right, let me ask it this way. When the public does learn everything you know, um, is it going to be something that will be a no-brainer to the public? It's an excellent second way to ask it. I'm not going to answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> Why wouldn't you answer that? Do you believe what you know is something that, a, that the public reasonably will be able to understand and it won't? It won't be foggy. The reason I'm doing, giving you these answers is I'm duty bound not to talk about what I learned during the investigation before I left, and I don't know what's happened since. It's possible things that I knew have changed since then. Right. So it's just I can't do it without crossing the lines. I'm obligated to to abide. Have you learned new things since you left from the media? Learn all kinds of new things. No, from, from the on the investigation. I think so, although I love the media, but I always take it with a grain of salt because I know there are no leaks coming out of the special counsel's office. So by necessity, nobody who really knows what's going on is talking. I want to ask you about Mike Flynn. General Flynn pled guilty to making a false statement to the, to the FBI regarding 26, uh, these December conversations with Ambassador, then Ambassador Kislyak of Russia. Uh, in the Washington Examiner, they report that according to sources familiar with meetings that you had, that you told lawmakers when you were still director of the FBI, that FBI agents who interviewed Flynn did not believe that Flynn had lied to them or that any inaccuracies in his answers were intentional. If that's the case, what did he plead guilty to? Yeah. An example of how you can't believe everything you read. In this the is media. not true. Not true. And I don't know what people heard me say, if they're reporting it accurately, what they heard me say, they misunderstood, but that's not accurate. Uh, on the Mike Flynn uh, plea deal as a prosecutor, um, some people have described it as an incredibly sweetheart, incredible sweetheart deal. Would you describe it that way? No, I wouldn't describe it either way because I can't see what's on the other side of the wall. That is, what is the evidence and what's the nature of his cooperation? Uh, when you were invited to dinner by the president on July 27th, mm -hmm. that after January 27th, excuse me, January 27th, <clears throat> thank you for correcting me on that, the day before, um, then Deputy Attorney General Sally Yates had briefed the White House that Mike, that Mike Flynn had lied to the FBI. When you got that call to have dinner with the president, did you know going, did you think going in he was going to ask you about Flynn? No, I worried that it might come up. And if you've seen my memo, I made mm -hmm. clear to note it did not come up at all. Now, it does come up in February. Uh, and he says, can you lay off Mike Flynn? Why didn't you tell him that was inappropriate? That's a great question. I've asked myself that a bunch of times. I think because I was so focused, first shocked, and so focused on trying to remember his exact words and standing there alone in the Oval Office that it didn't occur to me in the time. It, it, no, it, it was, uh, the reason I asked it, you corrected Reince Priebus on the proper channels to use to ask about FISA warrants. Mm -hmm. You never once corrected the president about different ways he should be handling things. Is that just, why was that? Probably a couple things. I think it's harder to correct the president. And second, you got to remember the atmosphere. He had just kicked out my boss who had tried to linger, the attorney general, and still been booted out of the Oval Office. And so you have to realize that if he if he didn't know he was doing something he shouldn't do, why was he kicking out the leadership, including my boss? Had Mike Flynn been on the FBI's radar before December of 2016? I don't think I can answer that. And could you answer if he'd ever been interviewed by the FBI before that? I couldn't answer that. Um, if, uh, if, you plea guilty, if you plead guilty to lying to the FBI as a cooperating witness, are you ever a good witness on the stand? Does that mean you would ever use them as a witness on the stand? How, did, how are they credible if you plead guilty, the, uh, if, you're in a, if you basically plead guilty to lying? 
Oh, you can. I mean, plenty of witnesses do it and are credible to a jury or a judge. They've acknowledged their wrongdoing, and plenty of people who tell the truth also lie at times, and so he's accepted responsibility. And it depends on what other evidence you have to corroborate the account of that witness. I guess I'm asking, is it more likely he had to have something material that, that the special prosecutor wanted to get the deal that he got? Yeah, too hard to answer from the outside, Chuck. There's just an, it, 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 it's just it, all speculation. I mean, that's, that is both the, the challenge and also the great thing about a special prosecutor conducting an investigation with no leaks. You do not know what he has or where he is. All right, I want to ask you about something that um, President Trump said last night uh, about Vladimir Putin and this lawyer that was at this infamous Trump Tower meeting. Here it is. Putin and the group said, you know, this Trump is killing us. Why don't you say that you're involved with government so that we can go and make their life in the United States even more chaotic? So the president last night is spe perhaps he's speculating that Vladimir Putin is now telling his folks, hey, yes, yeah, say you did cooperate. And the lawyer he's referring to is an Natalia Veselinitskaya, who was the woman at the center of the infamous Trump Tower meeting in July of 2016. What does that tell you? So f Putin's instructions are to falsely implicate yourself in conspiring with Americans? Is that what you heard? I, I don't know exactly what to make of that, <laughs> but that, that's one interpretation of what he said. Uh, does that give you hope that he actually now sees that Vladimir Putin is trying to um, uh, play games with the United States? It doesn't give me any hope that he's seeing or thinking clearly. The Trump Tower meeting. Did you know about it um, before you left for the FBI? Yeah, I can't answer that one. Um, when the president uh, was briefed as a nominee in August of 16, and again, when you briefed him at Trump Tower in December, you had already opened an FBI investigation, uh, we now know due to the Papadopoulos, George Papadopoulos. In the briefings to the Trump campaign, did you hold back certain things because you were concerned that you didn't want, that you didn't trust them with certain things? Not that I recall. We, we wouldn't have revealed the details of a counterintelligence investigation, at, certainly at an early stage like that. Mm -hmm. I think the purpose of the August briefing, as I recall, was a general counterintelligence briefing on the threats from Russia and other countries. So there was no... Uh, and when you told them, hey, if they make any efforts, contact the FBI, did the Trump campaign or the Clinton campaign ever make contact with you? I don't remember. I don't remember any. It's possible they did. I'm curious. Do, as far as your day goes in 2016, how much of your day would be focused on an invest the worrying about both the Clinton investigation or the Trump investigation at any given time? How much of your time during the week? Is that something as director you, you had a little more um, involvement in because they were so sensitive or not? Yeah, a little more involvement in both. Probably more in the Clinton email investigation up through July when we we thought it ended, mm -hmm. and the, at least a weekly briefing on that before then, and on the Russia threat, which was both involved a counterintelligence investigation by the FBI and broader work by the intelligence community, mm -hmm. at least once a week, probably multiple times a week. Uh, Corey Lewandowski, a former campaign manager to Donald Trump, uh, criticized the FBI, saying when they hired Paul Manafort, the, um, somebody who the FBI, now, we now know, interviewed in 2014, um, that he thinks the FBI should have been obligated to tell the Trump campaign Paul Manafort was potentially compromised and somebody they shouldn't associate with. Is that the FBI's responsibility and should it be? Yeah, I'm not going to comment on Manafort in particular, but in general, that's not the FBI's job. The FBI does background work on government mm -hmm. appointments and government hires, but not to private entities. I want to ask you about the Clinton email investigation. Uh, starting in October, you say in your book that Deputy Director Andrew McCabe told you something about Anthony Weiner and his laptop and something involving the Clinton in early October. And then there's a sort of a gap. You sort of, you don't explain why nothing, and then you, then you sort of fast forward to October 27th. What happened in the intervening time there? Why wasn't, why didn't your antenna go off sooner going, whoa, Anthony Weiner, what? We better get on top of this. Yeah, I remember somebody, and I think it was the deputy director, Andrew McCabe, saying something to me early in October, I think. Mm -hmm. And I didn't index on it because how on earth could there be a connection between Anthony Weiner and Hillary Clinton's emails? And so I don't remember even noting it in my head as a follow-up. 
And the next thing I remember is the team coming back to me. Actually, Andy emailed me at 5.30 in the morning on October 27th saying the team needs to meet with you and met with them that morning and got the full briefing. I don't know exactly what happened in between. I assumed, and it wasn't conscious, but I, I think I must have assumed the team was following up to figure out if there's a connection between Wiener and Clinton. In Roger Stone's book on the 2016 campaign, he writes about a scheme, and it's a bit convoluted, but that essentially says New York FBI agents worked uh, with NYPD investigators who were at the time investigating the sexting allegations against Anthony Weiner, that they worked with him to essentially get access to his laptop knowing Huma Abedin had forwarded some emails. They knew in advance and they were working together to get that in there, to get that out. It's quite the conspiracy. He lays it out in his book there. How concerned were you that New York FBI agents were leaking? all of this information and how much pressure did you feel to deal with this? First of all, I don't know what Roger Stone's theory is. That doesn't sound true to me, doesn't mm -hmm. ring a bell with me, so I'll set that aside. We were concerned that there appeared to have been, I'm not saying there were, appeared to have been leaks, especially with respect to the Clinton Foundation investigation that were coming out of the New York office, and I had commissioned an investigation to find out whether that was true. I know you've said, it, we still don't know the answer to that, the assumption is this IG report that's coming about the handling of the Clinton email investigation, is, is it supposed to address the potential leaks, whether it's to Rudy Giuliani or somebody else? I don't know. I, the, what I ordered was an internal FBI investigation. I don't know whether that's part of the IG's work now. And I want to finally ask you a final question about Loretta Lynch. You talk, you write about your concerns about unverified information that you thought could embarrass the, uh, the Obama Justice Department, Loretta Lynch, and it had to do with some speculation that's now been out there that supposedly, and it, we, we now think it was a false set of emails that seemed to indicate she had promised the Clinton case, don't worry, nothing's going to happen here. Um, I'm curious, you were worried about it. Why didn't you ever bring it up to her or the Deputy Attorney General? I don't think I can talk about what contact we made with the leadership of justice about that. Mm -hmm. And so I have to stop there. And it, by the way, I don't agree with the, your predicate. I can't describe it because it's classified. I'm just not by my silence agreeing with your predicate that it was false documents. I, I guess, but in your book, you sort of leave it out there as a hanging meatball that she, you know, that you, you imply that she's compromised. You no, know, I don't. Was Attorney General Loretta Lynch compromised? No, I don't believe that. You, and, and that's you, what's so it hard is about implied in the book. It. You realize it comes across that way in the book. Yeah, I wrote at least twice in the book that I had no reason to believe Loretta had acted improperly and I stand by that but this was a factor in my decision making so I had to describe it as best I could. Okay so let me ask you this between that and then the Clinton tarmac meeting which you said at first you thought it was absurd that it, it was an issue but you saw it had gotten traction on cable why didn't you tell her to, why didn't you recommend to her or to Sally Yates she should recuse herself that's the cleanest way out of this. Yeah that's a great question and maybe I should have but before we had a chance to have a conversation about it, she announced publicly that she would not recuse herself, but would instead accept my recommendation and that of the career prosecutors. And so at that point, then I have to make a decision. Do I stand with her? I like her very much, but do I stand with her to announce this, or do I announce it separately? Uh, I'm going to close with this. Susan Collins, last week on the show, um, uh, I asked her about uh, your book. Here's what she said. I'm curious to s get your reaction to what she said. Mm -hmm. I cannot imagine why an FBI director would seek to essentially cash in on a book when the investigation is very much alive. He should have waited to do his memoir. Should you have waited? I hope she'll read it and, <laughs> and see that it's not about the investigation. It's about, not even about Donald Trump. It's about something much broader that I thought it was important to talk about now. Um, I was just going to say, is your, what's the goal for the reader? What do you hope the reader takes away about Donald Trump? And what do you hope the reader takes away about the FBI? I hope the reader takes away that Donald Trump and Barack Obama and George W. Bush and others illustrate something about the importance of values in the life of this country and about what leadership can and should be. And I hope they see the FBI as an institution committed to values and caring deeply about being separate from the political tribes in this country. Director Comey, uh, I would love to go farther, but there's so many questions you say you can't answer due to this <laughs> investigation. So uh, I guess it means, um, can I ask you this? Does, do you believe that Director Mueller is mindful of 
the political calendar as he goes through and that the closer things get to a, an election, the more investigations can play an outsized role, fair or unfair. I'm sure he knows all of that. He's definitely attentive to the calendar and like all good prosecutors wants to finish as quickly as he can. Okay. Director Comey, good luck on your book tour. I, don't, I would say good luck with book sales, but I think um, based on book sales, you don't need any more luck. <laughs> Thank you, Chuck. You got it. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and then click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.